Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Hope you're all doing well. Unfortunately, Tim is still sick, but the good news is he tells me he's getting better and he should be back to work very soon. In fact, we are still planning to do that live stream build tomorrow. Uh, he's not 100% today, but, well, he's not going to be 100% tomorrow either, he reckons, but he'll be good enough to do the live stream build. So we're going to be doing that on the channel. Should be a lot of fun. So uh, yeah, keep an eye on your notifications for that one because it won't be at the regular time. Anyway, because Tim is out of action, we didn't have a video ready for today's slot. I've got two benchmark videos planned, but the testing's not quite done yet. So yeah, no video ready. Not a big deal though. Uh, we can just skip today. Or at least that's what I thought we were going to do. While reading over your comments on yesterday's ASUS build video, I noticed a huge amount of people talking about RGB SSDs. And that's because I included, well, partly because I included this RGB SSD in the build video. Um, and one of the first comments on that video really, really confused the hell out of me basically went along the lines of something like, the system's probably gonna be unstable because I made the mistake of using an RGB SSD. I was really, really confused by this comment. I thought the person just had to be trolling me. It was some sort of RGB meme or something like that. Anyway, shortly after, I just got more and more comments about the RGB SSD that I should check it to make sure that it wasn't running super hot and there wasn't problems with it and all this. I'm like, where is this coming from? Then finally, someone said, were you having the same problems that Jay saw? Jay from Jay's Two Cents. And then I thought, okay, I've got to go find this video from Jay. Went over to his channel, couldn't find it. Turns out it's the latest video he's done. Surprise, surprise. Just didn't have anything to do with SSDs or RGB in the title. I guess it was meant to be a surprise or something. So the first thing I noticed was that Jay wasn't even using the same SSD. He had the Kingston HyperX Fury RGB SSD. Yeah, it's an RGB SSD, but that's about all they have in common. They use different controllers, different NAND flash memory, and completely different RGB lighting. The issue Jay had with his drive was entirely down to the LED lighting. With it disabled, the drive worked perfectly fine. Now, the Fury X uses a staggering 75 RGB modules, all of which are mounted on the same PCB as the storage-related components. And we know this because Anantec took the thing apart and showed us what it looks like inside. Basically, all the lights are on one side of the PCB while the controller and memory are on the other. This means the vast majority of the heat generated by these lights is absorbed into the PCB, and, well, that helps cook everything else attached to it. And Antec concluded their review by saying this. The LED lighting on the Kingston HyperX Fury RGB SSD drives up the price of this SATA SSD to NVMe levels and draws enough power to make the drive more prone to overheating than almost any M.2 NVMe SSD out there. And we tested with only one of the three color channels illuminated. Kingston's design for this drive uses probably twice as many LEDs as necessary to provide the backlit logo and narrow highlights, though a lot of the light is blocked as it passes through the translucent plastic diffuser sheet and metal grating. Something I found of interest is the fact that Anantec didn't note the horrendous stability issues that Jay saw, but then they did only test with a third of the lighting enabled, so probably had enough of the LEDs disabled to avoid any major problems. That said, Tom's hardware did test with all the LEDs enabled, and they also didn't notice the horrendous stability issues that Jay saw, though they did note poor performance after moderate write and copy workloads, which does suggest a throttling issue. Not super uncommon for an SSD, but more so when discussing NVMe SSDs rather than the slower 2.5-inch models housed in aluminium enclosures. Having now read a few reviews from leading tech sites, I feel Jay probably got a dud, a defective model of what is still a rather poor product, but I'm not convinced it's as terrible as what Jay found. So while I don't think his findings are the norm, it's still a flawed product that costs too much for what it is, and it has way, way too many LEDs. If I were Jay, I'd digress. No, but seriously, I would have pulled the thing apart to see where the LEDs were placed, try and work out why they were getting so hot, and just mess around with it a bit, check out the internals, and yeah, just see what's going on. That would have been really interesting, but at least the Nantech did tear it down, and they did give us a look at the internals. I've watched Jay's video twice now, and I'm still not sure on a few things, like did he reach out to Kingston to see what they had to say about the issue? So is it a common issue? Uh, does it impact all drives? Was his just effective, which is what I suspect was the case here. Again, we know it runs hotter than it should, but I haven't seen a single other review complaining about Windows 
but well, Windows not working. Out of curiosity, I've decided to buy one of these things. We don't have a contact at Kingston, so I've just decided to buy one. The 480 gigabyte models, it's like, it's $150 Aussie, somewhere around there. So not terribly expensive. So yeah, just ordered one so we can see what the deal is. I'm really mostly just interested to see if it actually works with all the RGBs on. Jay noted that it was particularly bad when they were all set to white. So yeah, I want to see if uh, all the drives when set to white just fail or have some sort of weird issue. So yeah, it'd be pretty mind blowing if they all had that issue that Jay saw. Uh, surely, surely there's no way Kingston could have released a product that's really that broken. Surely. What I can tell you is that me looking at this thing won't change the fact that Kingston's HyperX Fury RGB SSD is flawed and you should really avoid it. So regardless of my findings, Jay is right about that. However, if you want an RGB SSD, then I can highly recommend the Team Group model. It doesn't run hot, it doesn't suffer any stability issues, and as far as I can tell, the RGB lighting on this one is completely harmless. The T-Force Delta RGB SSD packs just eight RGB LEDs, and yet despite that, in my opinion, it lights up better than the Kingston model. The LEDs are also on a completely separate PCB, which doesn't come in contact with the main PCB, housing the controller, DRAM cache, and NAND flash. Using an IR gun, I measured a peak surface temperature of just 32 degrees in a 21 degree room after a 20 minute stress test. It was also barely warm to hold, though I'm not sure if I've become desensitized to hot surfaces after all that Z390 VRM testing that I did. But this SSD certainly didn't feel warm to touch. Anyway, I'll just stick to using the scientific instruments that I have at my disposal and trust them over my touch test. Pricing is also super competitive despite the flashy RGB lighting. Team Group's charging just $68 US for the 500 gigabyte model. And for some pricing context, Crucial is selling their MX500, 500 gigabyte for $70 right now, while Samsung's 860 Evo 500 gigabyte costs $80 US. As for performance, it's not class leading by any means, but it's certainly not slow either. Basically, there's no chance you'll notice the difference between any of the models I just mentioned. Anyway, I just wanted to make this quick video to address the crazy amount of comments I saw bashing the Team Group Delta RGB SSD because another completely unrelated RGB SSD is hot garbage. So yeah, I thought it was a bit unfair that this SSD was getting completely bashed because of another SSD. Anyway, we've addressed that now. This one is perfectly fine. Uh, and if you want a flashy looking SSD, then yeah, I do recommend it. But yeah, RGBs on SSDs, kind of a weird one that but as we found in the build yesterday, it does kind of look cool if you can put it on display and if you're into your RGB lighting and whatnot. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one. Again, we will have our live stream build tomorrow, so keep an eye out for that. Hopefully, Tim, uh, well, hopefully he'll be doing better than the Kingston RGB SSD. He won't be throttling that hard. Hopefully, he's over his illness. And yeah, hopefully you guys didn't mind this sort of filler video. I thought it was interesting to cover. Normally this is the kind of thing I would do as a Patreon behind the scenes video, you know, discuss these kinds of issues with the Patreon members. But because this was something that came from a main channel video and was discussed by a lot of people that probably aren't Patreon members, I thought I would just make this video because we had, we had a free slot and this video really didn't take me much time or effort to make. So yeah, there's that. So hopefully it was still enjoyable. Anyway, I'll be back with some big in-depth benchmark videos, which I know you guys love on the channel very soon. I have some pretty cool benchmarks lined up. So yeah, you don't want to miss those. Anyway, like the video if you liked it, subscribe for more content. And if you appreciate the work with your hero box, then consider supporting us on Patreon. And yeah, thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.